So this morning I have been working on pockets and I've got the pink side of the fabric apron will have pockets that look like this and the spool side of the fabric will have pockets that look like this. I slipped a piece of rickrack underneath this edge. Let me get that where you can see it. And um, just just half of the rickrack actually shows. You actually lay your line right against this upward hill here. So only the lower part of the rickrack shows. I did have a hard time getting that in. I ended up having to hand stitch a lot to get it to stay. It was time consuming, but I think the effects were well worth it. So I have my first set of pockets pinned on and I've got them lined up with these floral designs that run across here, right here. Um, and they look pretty straight. I laid it, I had to lay it on my floor because I don't have a cutting table in this room. I'm getting ready to sew this pair on and then I'll lay the other pair out and sew them on. So one side finished and it looks pretty good. I'm happy and I like the contrast of this darker pocket on this pink. So really happy with that. And I'm going to get the other one pinned on. I'll try this pink one. So I just lay it somewhere in here starting out. I just lay to mark even with this armhole, which I know you can't really see because it's out of the picture. But I see right away I need to lower this down. I just want to get enough of this line that I can line my uh, pocket up. So I don't trace the whole thing. I just more or less get two or three inches, and that's enough to line it up. Well, there's that one. You'll be able to see better on this side. Just mark away. I like the smooth edge wheels for this kind of thing. I've had this one for years. It's got a nice little rest for your thumb and um you can't find these anymore i've probably had this one for over i would say gosh 45 years i love the design of this one my favorite i've actually glued this handle back on with um some kind of glue because it came loose once and i was not willing to part with it um you know, when you have a good tool, you find a way to repair it. And I try to let, match them up on that line. And hopefully, I've got these more accurate than the pink, you know, first. The pink was a little off. Um, but just to kind of check myself, I'll move this up where you can see. Is It looks like it's okay here. The this spool and that spool. I just kind of look to see how it looks and um, adjust if I feel like I need it. It looks pretty straight though. Um, I've been taking my ruler and just I measure and these are the same distance apart. What I got going on here? I just want to make sure that the bottoms are about the same, somewhere in the middle is about the same, so that it'll look right. Um, I still think this one's down to, and I feel like it's about right, then I, I pin it down. Just that margin of error that probably did occur tracing. So there we are, and I'll just grab a few pins here. I like to go down the straight edge first, and then do the curve. It um, seems a little awkward because I'm starting here. I am right-handed, but those of us that are left-handed, well, I'm, I'm right-handed, but those that are left-handed um, probably would start here and go around. Um, doesn't really bother me too much. Um, 
because I've trained my brain a little bit to think that way for knitting and sewing. So, so here's this side. Um, really looks nice. I had to hand baste the rec rack in place. I hand basted this um, folded over edge in place and then sewed it. Next is to put the ties in place. Um, these are, let's see, it's like, I know it's just barely the, the um, seam allowance, barely misses it. Um, I've been stitching at three eighths and it's placed at half inch. So that's where I'm gonna place it. Make sure everything's pressed down real good in those corners. What you need to make sure you do is that you place, don't sew your, you want the raw edge going into this area. So these ties are gonna be nicer than my other ties. I can tell you that right now. Um, I want the thread side, right sides together so it'll be on my thread side. So I'm placing this about five eighths from the lower edge or upper edge here, this corner, just to give myself a little extra room. Um, so that's literally just an eighth of an inch from what it said. Um, but just make sure you have your raw edge and get this in camera view if I can. There it is. You want your right sides together, so this thread is a thread one. Put the thread one down against it, and I just measure. Like I said, I'm a, I'm allowing a little bit more than what it measured. Just want to give myself a little extra room there for clearance, so I don't catch that when I sew these two together. So again, just checking to make sure. I've allowed myself that little extra room. Okay, so that's that's that one. You're gonna stitch these kind of in place. And then what I do is I kind of just stick this down in the pocket. See, when I go to stitch the thing together, the whole two sides together, this is out of the way. I don't have to worry about these coming, floating over here somewhere and getting caught. They're down inside this pocket. So these, these kind of become a handy to have there. Um, I'm gonna baste these in place and then we'll do the top. So maybe I should have made two and done the Velcro thing. I think I'm gonna back up and make two of these cause this doesn't look long enough. So, so I got my second necktie put together. I do apologize. I don't know what I was thinking. You would have to add length to this to be able to make it just where it would slip over your head. So since I didn't think ahead on that, um, I have no choice but to go ahead and do the two ties. Um, certainly you could probably figure that out on your own or just look at another apron. Even if you don't own one, look at them in the store. Just kind of figure out a way to measure it. Um, when I took a math class in college, the professor was really good at telling us other ways to measure things, um, such as most bodies are one inch from here to here. Now, of course, you don't want to sit there and do this, but if you know the length of your hands, say from here to here, you could quickly see how many hands long it is. And then when you get home, you just transfer that to a measurement. Simply tie this in back. Once I tie it, I probably never will tie it again. I'll just leave it tied. But um, I could do the Velcro that suggested. I could do a couple of buttons, a couple of snaps. Uh, any of those are possibilities. Uh, I am liking the way it's turning out. Now, I'm gonna base these in place and then I'll start to layer and I'll kick back in again. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there is no place to um, anchor your upper ties to keep them out of the way. So what I kind of do is I just look for a place that they crisscross really easily. And I'm just gonna safety pin that to the actual apron so it doesn't um, 
move around. And that way I don't have to worry about that working its way over here. It's secured right here. So what this suggests is that you leave a hole in the bottom of the garment for turning. So I'm going to pin all the way around this apron just every so often, like I'll match the center here at the top. And I'll pin this tie in place where it's straight. And I just work my way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these ties kind of anchored here, just so I don't forget. And just match your curve. If I'm on vacation, I like to buy little pieces of art. This was made in Buffalo, Wyoming by an artist. Her name was Judy Sher Sherbert, it looks like, on the back. I usually double pin to tell me that's where I'm gonna open, keep leave the opening. I'm actually gonna leave it a little wider than I did on the last one because it really wasn't quite wide enough. And um, I'll remove that one now. Um, I only did the center part there temporarily so that I could get that straight um, and then I just take it out. But I double pinned that to remind me that I'm not sewing in that area. So now it's pinned um, and I'm ready to go to the machine. So I'll start here. Now I'm back around to my opening and I try my best to get this as even as possible. I just kind of work my way over. Well, hi everyone. So guess what? Cheryl did not like her ending on her apron. So I'm refilming it. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I really didn't like it. So I deleted the whole ending. My apron is finished and here it is. So first off, we're going to talk about how I finished this neck edge. Snap tape. I love snap tape. Oh, here, I'll just unsnap it. So there's one side of the snap tape. I just stitched down these long edges and I used my zipper foot to do that because I could get nice and close. Um, it was about the only foot, let me get this pre-snap, that I had um, that would really allow me to get that close to that edge. Okay, so then I just snippy, slip it over, it's in the right spot. Now, next question, you're probably asking, what is that? <laughs> this is my needle minder. I bought this at Bumpin's Sewing Emporium. I think I've talked about it before, but I'm not real sure. So I thought that's going right there. And it's like that. And what did I put in my pockets? I had so things that cut my shorter Kai scissors. Boom my seam ripper which is double-sided i do have both ends as seam rippers and the reason is i have it all and to be totally honest with you i have never used it so double seam ripper in the other pocket i have a chalk pencil chalk in this handy little dandy plastic thing I have this um, seam gauge. I love this little point turning tool. It's probably one of my favorite things. Everybody has their favorite little tools. You want those handy. And then of course, I own five of these tape measures and can never find one. Yes, one is going inside the pocket. So that is what is in my apron. And here's again, the lower edge, you can't see it. So I'll just raise it up like that. Um, 
I did end stitch all the way around these outer edges once I got this all turned and neatly pressed. So it ties in the back and that's easily done. Um, I'm just really, really pleased with it. So what is next for me? Well, I've decided I'm gonna make me another dress because I really need another dress that I can wear this summer. But I'm replacing my dresses and um, I wanted something with a little bit of sleeve on it. So I had this chambray that I bought at, I'm pretty sure, Joann's a few years ago. And I've had this dress kind of laying beside it, but this morning, you know me, you know, well, you know how you are. You, you have to look and make sure, am, am I really sure that's the one I want to cut out? And I went through all my patterns and I decided, yes, I do want to cut it out of this. So I'll take this McCall's pattern and I'm gonna make this view right here. And I hope that you have sewing plans as well. Let me know what they are and share with me um, any little tidbits, things you might add to your apron. You have yourself a great week and I will see you later in the week with another episode. And don't forget, like and subscribe. Thank you, bye.